All right, let's do this. Left foot on the brake, gas all the way down, let it build, 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 and go. Oh, man. My name is Omar, and this is the Audi RS Q8. All right, so let's get the most common thing out of the way first. I'm sure you've heard that this is known as the cheaper version of the Lamborghini Urus. And that's because these both are siblings and share a lot of parts with each other. But the most important thing that they share is what's under that hood. Here in the RSQ8, you have a four liter twin turbo V8 making 591 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. The Urus gets the same engine, but over there, it makes 641 horsepower, which is 50 more than this. Now, personally, I've only driven the Urus once for a short period of time, and I never really got to push it, so I'm not gonna speak too much on that comparison. However, when it comes to the numbers, these two aren't too far off from each other. The RS Q8 here will do zero to 60 in an officially quoted time of 3.7 seconds, although I've done it in 3.5. According to Car and Driver, the Urus will do 60 in 3.2 seconds, so that means this is just 0.3 seconds slower than the Urus. Not to mention it costs like 100 grand less. That said, whether or not if this is a cheap, well, I'm not gonna say cheap, a more affordable version of the Urus doesn't really matter. What matters is that this thing is freaking fast. Pop this into dynamic or one of your preset RS modes and hit the gas and this thing takes off like a missile. It is absolutely insane how quickly you'll hit a speed that can get you into a lot of trouble. And the crazy thing is that you can move like this in an SUV that weighs over 5,400 pounds. Forget the Urus, I'm blown away that this SUV is faster than most sports cars out there. The way the power just builds is instantaneous. That twin turbo V8 under the hood works really, really hard and builds that power up so seamlessly. I mean, let's be honest, no one really buying a Lamborghini Urus for $235,000 is really gonna think about saving 100 grand and going for this. But if they did, I wouldn't be mad at them because this thing really moves. And you know what's crazy? This isn't the slightest bit uncomfortable. You may think that as a performance SUV, this has a rough riding suspension, but not at all. Whether you're in comfort, dynamic, or RS, this thing hustles. But the way it just glides over bumps and imperfections on the road is something you'll enjoy if you like not having back pains. Speaking of drive modes, you have a bunch to work with here. You have all-road, off-road, comfort, auto, and dynamic. However, you also have two RS modes, including RS1 and RS2. Now, RS1 will let you go through and adjust a bunch of different aspects like the drive, the suspension, the steering, the engine sound. RS2 will let you adjust all that, plus it will let you adjust the electronic stability control. And the cool thing is that you can activate either of the RS modes by pushing this RS button right here on the steering wheel. Now, like most Audi models, the steering feel here is on the lighter side, so you don't have to hit the gym to move this around. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of light steering feels. I like a tighter steering feel for when I'm fully maxed out in a sport mode. To be honest, no matter which steering feel you set this to, you won't really feel a difference. The change is very, very minimal. But yeah, the biggest party trick of the RSQ8 is that instant acceleration that throws you back into the seat. Honestly, I can do this all day while draining my bank account while I'm continuously filling it up at the gas station. That said, if you enjoy super high performance SUVs but don't like a stiff ride, you're going to love this experience. This ride's much smoother than a BMW X6M and maybe even a little bit smoother than the GLE 63. Now, one thing that I will say is that it sounds brilliant when you're pushing it, I'm sure you've heard it. As you accelerate, it sounds great. And then when you downshift, you'll hear some snap, crackle, and pops, but they are very, very faint because this cabin is super, super quiet. Just listen again. There's a snap, crackle, and pop, and you might have heard it, but it's not as loud as I would want it to be. Audi has done a great job when it comes to insulating this cabin. My test model even has dual pane glass, so it's even more quiet in here. And to be honest, I'm not sure if I like that. If I'm paying over $126,000 for a performance SUV, I want to hear that noise. You might like it if it's nice and quiet inside a luxury SUV, but I want to hear that engine and I want to hear that exhaust. But to be honest, that's one of the overall themes of the RSQ8. It's subtle, it's very simple, and kind of a sleeper. If you pulled up to a red light next to one of these, you might think that this is just a regular Q8. 
I honestly like the package of comfort mixed with insane amount of power, but I do want this to be just a little bit more spicy. And definitely way more spicy in the looks department because the RSQ8 here doesn't stick out too much over the regular Q8 and the SQ8. Now bear with me here as I give you my thoughts on the looks here. This looks pretty normal. There's not much craziness going on here. You've got a slightly restyled and more aggressive grille in the front with an RS badge on it. On the back, you also have an RSQ8 badge, and then you have two oval shaped exhaust pipes. And beyond that, this looks just like a Q8. My test model here has a black optics package for an extra $3,250, and I definitely recommend adding that because it will give you blacked out treatments all around. It'll black out all the Audi rings, all the badges, the exhaust, and much more. If you really want to stick out, you can get the carbon optic package for an extra $3,000, and that will give you some carbon fiber treatments on the exterior as well. Now, as a part of the black optics package, you get 23 inch wheels that look really cool. My test model here is riding on 22 inch wheels because of winter, so I guess that's why they look kind of plain. But yeah, I wish this came with like a giant rear spoiler or wider fenders to make it look a little bit more crazy and different. I feel like if you saw this parked in a parking lot next to other luxury SUVs, no one would notice that this is the 591 horsepower RSQ8. I guess maybe only Audi fans will notice it and get excited. Others will just pass it by. Nonetheless, I have to say the Q8 itself is my favorite sloping roofline coupe looking SUV. Audi has done a great job of styling in this segment. It looks proportionate and it doesn't look weird at all, kind of like the BMW X6 does or the Mercedes-Benz GLE coupe. That said, let's talk about this interior because while it's really, really well put together and really luxurious, it's not that different from the interior of the SQ8 that I drove a few months back. Audi's interior game hasn't seen much advancement in terms of design or even tech in recent years. Most of their interiors tend to look very similar across many models. My test model here does get these really comfortable Napa leather RS specific seats and they are heated and cooled as standard. Of course, they should be at this price tag. Although if you want massaging seats, that will cost you an extra $1,500 as a part of the luxury package. You can get this with an RS design package for $1,500 and that will add on some red stitching and an Alcantara steering wheel to make it look a little bit cooler. But yeah, that's the theme that I noticed. You have to pay extra to make the RS Q8 look more like an RS model. As far as tech goes, you're working with Audi's dual screen setup. The top section houses the MMI infotainment system. It has all the usual suspects you would expect, including wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You also have navigation. Now, I will say that while this infotainment is really simple in terms of design, it is also very simple in terms of use. Everything is super smooth and super quick. There aren't any glitches and it just works. The bottom screen is mainly focused around your climate control settings and it's pretty straightforward. You also have your controls for your heated and cooled seats right down here. And then of course you also have Audi's virtual cockpit display and it is very informative and very, very sharp. Still one of my favorite gauge clusters in the game. I still love the full screen map view and the RSQ8 here gets some RS specific gauges that look really, really dope. It kind of looks like an airport runway. But yeah, you'll like this if you don't like the giant tablets that every other brand is sticking on top of their dashes these days. However, you will absolutely hate this if you hate fingerprints because all the screen inch, all the polished black trim in here is so prone to fingerprints that Audi even includes a microfiber cloth to wipe it all down. But yeah, the screen and all the trim gets pretty dusty and you'll see it all over your dash. Now, driver assist tech wise, you have all the Audi pre-sense safety tech that you would expect. You have adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, you have park assist where this will automatically park itself. And my test model also has a pretty strong camera game with all the usual camera angles. And you also have the really cool 3D surround view. I think Audi does the 3D view the best. By the way, my test model also has night vision assistant for an extra 2,500. And if you live in an area where there are a lot of deers, I definitely recommend adding this on. And then the most expensive option on my test model here is the $5,000 23 speaker Bang & Olufsen 3D advanced sound system. And it sounds outstanding. All right, so even though this is a high performance SUV, it's an SUV, so it has to be practical. That said, let's pull over and check out the practicality that you're working with. Hop in the second row of the RSQ8 and you have the same 40.2 inches of legroom that you have in the Q8 and the SQ8, so it is very spacious. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. As you can see, I've got plenty of room. This is a very, very spacious rear seat. Now, every time somebody reviews a sloping roof line vehicle, whether it's a sedan or an SUV, they complain about headroom and People have complained about the RSQ8 and the Q8 itself about lack of headroom and I'm six foot tall and I'm sitting here just fine. No lack of headroom at all. I've got a good amount of space back here. They even made an indentation to make sure you have headroom. So I don't know where all these 
eight plus feet car of yours are, but headroom is not an issue at all. My test model here has the executive package for an extra $2,800. That gives you heated rear seats and a bunch of other things. Again, you have four zone climate control, so both of the rear passengers can also enjoy their own climate. Not to mention, you have automatic peasant blockers. Check that out. You don't have to manually pull them. They close automatically. Nice. Let's check out the cargo space really quick. It can pop open the trunk by using the button located right here underneath the Audi logo. And once you get it open, you're working with 30 cubic feet behind the second row. And with the second row down, you have a total of 61 cubic feet. So that's not bad at all. Yeah, they are cutting some grass out here in this park. But before we get into the pricing details and whether or not if you should buy an RSQ, it, let me put out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have a total of four cup holders, two in the front right there. And then you have two in the back right here in the center armrest. Let me just zoom in. Stop cutting that grass, man. There you go. There's the other two cup holders in the center armrest. Here are the keys to the RSQ8. You have an RS logo right here on the back. Door closed down from the outside. Ooh. And from the inside, so solid. Audi's door closing sound is the best. Charging game wise, up front you're working with a wireless charger and two USB-C ports tucked away in the center armrest. Those sitting in the back have two USB-C ports right there. And of course we have to do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Nice Audi indicator. Now for the horn sound. Oh yeah, solid. So should you buy the Audi RS Q8 if you're looking for a high performance SUV? Sure, why not? But you do have other options. I mean, if you really want to drop $235,000 on a Lamborghini Urus, be my guest, but I like having money, so I would probably get this over the Urus. However, would I get this over the RS6 Avant or the RS7? All the big boy Audi RS models carry the same 4 liter twin turbo V8 under the hood and not to mention the RS6 Avant and the RS7 are actually slightly quicker than the RS Q8. Pricing for the RS Q8 starts at $125,800 making it the most expensive RS model that you can buy. The RS6 Avant is priced the lowest at $121,900 while the RS7 starts at $123,900. So if I really had to make the move, I think I personally would go for the RS6 Avant because I feel like that would turn more heads than the RS Q8. Although if I'm being completely realistic, I couldn't afford the RS Q8. It would be nice, but I ain't getting that kind of money from this YouTube channel. That said, the SQ8 is also a very solid performance SUV. I recently tested that a few months ago, and in there I said, you don't have to go for the RS Q8 because the performance gains between the SQ8 and the RS Q8 are very minimal. The SQ8 starts at around $96,000 and is also powered by a 4 liter twin turbo V8. However, over there it makes 500 horsepower and does 60 in 4 seconds flat. So like the RSQ8 which is 0.3 seconds slower than the Lamborghini Urus, the SQ8 is 0.3 seconds slower than the RSQ8. So yeah, while this thing is brilliant, fun to drive and extremely fast, what I enjoy more than all of that is having more money. So I would personally go for the SQ8 over this. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care. Peace. I mean, I'm not going to lie. This definitely has more of a punch than the SQ8 and just feels crazy, crazy fast. Of course, people also like showing off their high end badge performance SUV. So if you can afford an RSQ8 and a Lamborghini Urus, go for it. I'm really proud of you. You will enjoy every single bit of it. I'm not saying that the Urus and the RSQ8 aren't worth the money. They definitely are. But again, I just don't agree with people saying that just get the RSQ8 over the Lamborghini Urus because no one out there that can afford a $235,000 car is like, nah, man, I'm just going to save some money and go for the one that's $126,000. I'll go for the RSQ8 and have some more money in my bank account. No one buying a Lamborghini Urus is thinking that at all.